Now, go over to Revelation. Now, everything, I'm, everything about the last days is hinged upon this one truth. Come on, say this one truth. You are literally seeing the revelations playing out. But the reason why people don't understand it is because this one truth has been distorted and lied about and we don't know anything about it and uh, it's been a purposeful lie to keep Christians in the dark because if you can't figure this part out you won't understand anything you see happening anything the news is talking about is very difficult because you don't know who say who that's very important who so go to Revelation chapter 2 now this is familiar to some of you all should be familiar to most of you all Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Are y'all there? Y'all there? I still hear y'all turning. I want y'all to see it because you have to be able to go to these scriptures. When, when people talk to you about the last days, you need to be able to go to the scriptures and show them that you know what you're talking about. Amen? Amen. Uh, verse 9, it says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Y'all there? So this, so the, 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 now I told you all before, it seemed like this scripture should have been something scholars was working on with every, all the power and knowledge they had to find out who is he talking about? Because these people that are fake Jews, the whole end of the book seems to be focused on them. So we need to know who that is. Now, we know now through DNA evidence and archaeology and even biology now, uh, just through geography, that uh, the Jews that are in Israel are those fake Jews. We know that. They are the Jews that Revelations 2 is prophesying about. Another verse of Revelations chapter 3 and 9 says, uh, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So this false people have the attention of Jesus in the end of the book. He's talking about this false people. He's talking to his real people about a fake people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's talking to a real people about a fake people. And it's very important that you want now. The reason why I entitled this the old new Messiah or the coming false Messiah is because the Jewish, the fake Jewish people have had a Messiah for hundreds of years ever since the 1700s they've had a messiah and they know what his name is they believe that man is coming back and he they, he's not jesus christ actually he is the antithesis of christ he is the anti i'm gonna show you here in a second now the the name of their false christ is called uh sabbati Sebi, or it depends on what pronunciation, but Sabbatai Levi, Sabbati Sebi, Sabbati Zevi, but that's his name. And he was a, uh, he proclaimed himself to be Christ in 1666, 666. That's when he proclaimed himself to be Christ to the Jewish people. And the Jewish people, the majority of them began to follow him as the Christ. Now he was the one that came up with the philosophy that uh, redemption through sin, which is what the Kabbalah is based upon, which is what you see now on TV. He came up with, matter of fact, he had a quote that uh, he, they believe that if you, uh, that, that God was so holy that only two things would bring God back or cause God to return. They believe that if we get all righteous, he'll come back, or if we get all sinful, he'll come back. But either one will bring God back. So they said, well, since we know it's going to be hard to be a saint, let's just all be sinners. And they said, we'll bring God back through practicing all sin. 
this was a philosophy of saying that that sounds crazy but he had millions of followers and the Jewish people actually those fake Jews are rooted in Sabbatai Levi or Sevi as their false messiah the reason why that's important because these Jews now that run the world are Sabbateans the Rothschilds the Rockefellers those people that the bankers they are the ones that run your media. They are all but have the same philosophy as Sabbatai Sebi, believing that if that through sin, that's see the Kabbalah that they teach, where you see a lot of Hollywood stars and stuff into the Kabbalah. The reason why Hollywood is so wicked and music is so wicked is because the people over it are wicked, but they're teaching their philosophy of do as much sin as possible, and through sin one will become righteous. That's what they believe. It's the gospel turned upside down. It is Gnosticism. Uh, y'all come on talk so that's why everything you see on TV you wonder why is it so much murder why is it so much death why they just won't stop they just keep going this one thing goes into another every like you can't even watch nothing come on at 8 o'clock it's just all demonic and crazy and you wonder why do they why why is it like that because they believe you got to go all the way down into sin first and then then through uh, go all the way this is what this was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil go all the way into evil go as far as you can go and once you get that far then you will eventually become righteous this is what they believe that the sin that you continue to commit will release your spark when your spark is released you'll become one with the universe but the but you may say that's a silly belief but that's what they truly believe the people over your banking believe it the people over your movies believe it the people over your music believe it and that's why you're getting one message sex 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 every culture that goes away from Christ ends up so deb debased because they begin to practice the same philosophy of redemption through sin that's why the Bible says in the last days they're going to call wrong right and right wrong. In other words, the way to redemption is not to resist, it's to indulge. It's not to fast, it's to feast. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this is, Alistair Crawley practiced the same philosophy. That's why he said, do what thou will. That's really their law. That means that he, the reason why he was so wicked and so evil because he thought that if the more sin he partake in they're filling up they're filling up what they call um i want to call it the bible calls a cup of iniquity but they feel if they if you if, if enough people continue to sin they'll fill up this sin level to force god to come back that's what they believe so that's why they're looking for a god that comes at the height of sin when man is at their zenith, when man has totally went against the laws of God, they're going to be looking for a Messiah. You got what I'm saying? And that Messiah is not going to let them down. He coming. Are you there? That's why it's important that Jesus said, you know the tree by its fruit. See, in other words, if it's good, it's going to bring forth good fruit. Because they're going to be calling this thing coming good, but the fruit's going to be bad. His people are going to have to know based upon now. But if you are so full of the world and so worldly, your wires could be switched to make evil good to you. Well, I'll, you say, well, I don't know. Well, I'll show you how that works. Well, right now, you, right now, some of you all would take up for homosexuals and say, well, they ain't hurting nobody. It's just that, well, see, you're getting switched. Your wires are getting crossed. Are y'all there? See, 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 uh, 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 the goal is to... Um, I, told, I, I told you all this before the goal is to cause man to fall all the way from grace so that the atmosphere can be created I told you Satan been working on this for 6,000 years to get the kind of atmosphere that he can reign in he needs to reign in darkness where people are devoid of God that's why they fighting as hard as they can to take God out of everything and, and everything that's terrible they're exalting it you got what I'm saying now, let me give you a little information. There, there was a guy that did a study uh, on uh, Sabbatai Sebi named Henry Macau, and uh, he does one of the most thorough studies about it. And uh, he has an article called The Satanic Cult That Rules the World. And this is why you must understand that the world is dominated by families families 
this is what Paul said you are fighting spiritual wickedness in high places principality princes and palaces you're fighting people who are decreeing their philosophy on mankind they're, they're, people that are in league with Satan are decreeing because they own your corporations, they own your oil, they own your banks, they own your money, they own your music, they own your cars, they own your land so they can decree their will based upon the fact they own everything you need to live. They own your food so they can decree how they want your food to be. They own your water so they can decree what they put in it. You got to realize that's the principalities you're fighting against. These wicked people that are in league with Satan that can change your life by them decreeing based upon the fact you need their system. Now you see why the Bible says come out from among them. Begin to operate in a system of the kingdom of God where your system's not connected to their See, Now y'all start to see everybody connected to that system is losing. Because see, now if you go into that system and say homosexuality is wrong, you're going to lose your job. Because your job's connected to the... So that's why Jesus said... Uh, the Bible says come out from among them and be ye separate meaning we need to build our own systems we have it it's called the kingdom you build your own system so you're not connected to their system so you can stand up and proclaim without losing now we're gonna they're, they're gonna take a lot away from you the last thing they're gonna take is our life but 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 we shouldn't be so afraid uh, uh, to, to, to lose our job because our job is connected to this wicked system. And some of y'all feeling it more and more because now they get more flamboyant, they, they being more gay, they go openly with it, and they hope, and they know you say, then they walk past you with they buy, and they hope you say something, and people know now if I say something, I'm being in trouble. Why? Because you, you're connected to a system. The welfare system, the Medicare, all of that's connected. They're getting you in their system, and so you have to go along with stuff because you're connected to the system. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So they have built systems and corporations that you are tied to that you need to live. And so they sit back and make decrees over these corporations and you have to go along with it because you can't live without whatever they have. That's why you should be building something outside of that that if it come down to it, you don't need that system to live on. Are y'all there? Now, so uh, say, say, say families. Now I'm going to get into some of these families. I want to teach you a little bit tonight. I told y'all this is a teaching message. I want you to understand that everything you see is the matrix. Let's just say that. Everything you see is an illusion of freedom based upon based upon enslaving people whose eyes are open. In other words, you can see, you, 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 you understand what I'm saying? You can see, but you're still a slave. I told you all in the last message about the back of the dollar that, that, that pyramid that's being built, they're funneling everything under the power and control of the all-seeing eye, which we know is the light bringer or Lucifer. You are being funneled. Everything in this world, natural world, will be funneled up to that one point of authority. That's why the Bible says everybody, big, small, great, whatever, but you cannot buy or sell without the mark. Everybody's going to be funneled under the authority of the, of the all seeing eye. This is what you see happening. This is what the world is doing. This is why nations are rising against the nation. When Jesus said in the last days, nation will rise against nation, the rumors of war, it's because these nations are being forced, pushed all into this one foundation, giving their power to the next power, to the next higher power, the next higher power, till it gets all the way up to, the, to Lucifer. Once they build that foundation, Lucifer will appear. The Bible says that some of perdition will come because he will have a kingdom that will have already been built by these bloodline families that done it through corporations, not necessarily governments, corporations. Because corporations are multinational, meaning a corporation right now, if I got a, if I got, if, if, if I have a, a multi-billion dollar corporation, then I'm touching China. I may have a million workers in China. If I had a million workers in China, just because I'm an American, do you know how much I'm controlling? I'm controlling a big part of that, con of that economy so I can speak to that country. Y'all got what I'm saying? So multinational corporations are the foundations that Lucifer is building through giving bloodline families the power that are in league with him to build the foundation he needs to take over. Is this too much? 
So everything is going into one. And the Bible, and the reason why he's doing it, because he's, he's copying Christ. The Bible says that Christ is consuming everything. Uh, what, what's, what's the word? Um, Christ, uh, everything will be, um, he's bringing all things. What's that word? I forgot the word. I'll, I'll think of it. But anyway, Satan is trying to do what God is doing in Christ. Christ is bringing it all together. Everything is coming back into Christ. His people, his kingdom, and Satan is doing the same thing. Y'all got what I'm saying? Now, the re that's why we must get out of his system or as this vacuum that you feel pulling everything into this. I mean, if I could really, it's like a black hole. You know, this, this evil is like a black hole that's pulling everything, that's sucking everything in, and you feel the pull. It's strong, it's a pull, and you feel it. And so you have to get out of that, or you'll get sucked into that, and, you'll be, and you won't even realize you sucked into it. And the vacuum or the black hole of darkness is, is, is uh, deception. It's deception. It's making right wrong. It's making right wrong. Look how liberal your mind is now than it was 20 years ago. Amen. There are things you wouldn't have wore 20 years ago. Amen. There are things you would have called sin 20 years ago. Amen. There are attitudes and behaviors and lifestyles that we would have called sin 20 years ago. What's passing for beauty would have been whorish 20 years ago. Why? Because this, this, this spirit is sucking everything it's of, of deception. It's causing man to be okay with darkness. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, this is the job of these fake Jews over your entertainment. Jews run Hollywood and your music. And so their goal is to keep putting out wickedness, to distract you and to fill you up with wickedness, to give you suggestions. Notice that they keep talking about murder, 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 but they never deal with the stimulus. Where are these people getting these ideas for this crazy murder? They're getting it from TV. They're getting it from movies, and they're getting it from music. But they'll never convict those people because those people run by your judges. They, by your, they make your laws. So you got to understand how this is set up. Now, let me try to keep going here. Now listen, I want to talk to you all about the, about the cult that runs the world. Now all the Jews are not bad people. All of them are not. Some of them actually fight against the Zionists. Now the Zionists are the ones that are bad. These are the Sabbatean Jews, the Zionists. Y'all got that? There are some good Jews over there that fight against them, that know they are not the real Jews, and they know that those people are wrong. The problem is those good Jews still enjoy the benefits uh, of, of everything that the bad Jews is getting. It ain't like they leaving Israel and coming on out of there, so they still enjoying that land that they done stole. So let me give you a little history so you can understand. Are y'all there? Now, um, the Rothschilds, well, I'll... I'll let me, let me read a little bit. Now, so Sabbatai Sebi, now this, this, this comes from an article called Trillionaire Cult Rules the World. It says, if you want to know the true history of the bankster trillionaires with Jewish surnames who rule the world, take time to read, not skim this article, and this is the article I'm going to read to you. Not much is known about their history because you really never heard that name. Yet the philosophies that you see on TV, this vampirism, pedophilia, it's all their philosophy. But you don't know because they don't even mention the guy that started this. Uh, not much is known about their history, but Jewish author and historian Henry McCall has thoroughly researched it. If you think Adolf Hitler is the most evil man in human history, you haven't heard of Sabbatai Zebi. Now, Sabbatai Zebi declared himself to be the Jewish Messiah in the year 1666 and led the largest messianic movement in Jewish history. The false Messiah attracted more than half the population of European Jews with his promise to return the Jews to their ancestral homeland in Palestine. Did y'all catch that? So way before the First World War, Second World War, they, they already was looking to steal the land of Palestine from the Palestinians. Y'all got that? Because before the, they had the land of Palestine, the Jews did not have a homeland. Remember, they really came from Russia. They Caucasians. They came down into Europe, and they split up into all these European nations. 
And so they really didn't have a homeland. They were getting ran out of different nations. And when the Russian Revolution happened, they ran all into Germany. Most of them went into Germany. And so they were tired of running and they wanted a homeland. Are y'all there? Now, his teaching made everything that was holy unholy. He rejected the rules of the Jewish holy books and every standard of Jewish decency. There would be no more guilt or sin or right or wrong, nor, no more sexual taboos, no more Ten Commandments, no more fasting. Instead, there would be feasting. Sabotizing moral leadership fell from grace when the Sultan of Turkey threatened him with torture unless he converted to Islam. So this guy who said he was Messiah, when he got threatened to be killed by the Sultan, he did convert. Or so, or so they believed he just did it in word, but he converted to Islam. Sabbatai converted to Islam, but he brought his infectious evil theology with him. Y'all got that? One century later, Jacob Frank proclaimed himself to be the reincarnation of Sabbatai Zebi and the living Messiah of all, for all Jews. Not even Sabbatai Zebi was as evil as Jacob Frank and his disciples. So this other guy comes along after Sabbatai Sebi died and say, now I'm the reincarnation of this evil dude. I'm the Messiah. And the Jews followed him. Y'all got that? Jacob Frank rejected traditional Judaism. He reversed the truth and told his followers, since we can't all be saints, let's all be sinners. The best way to imitate God, said Frank, is to cross every boundary, transgress every taboo, and mix, as God did, the sacred with the profane. Now y'all see why everything we see in, there's no end to the evil. It just keeps going. You think you got to the end. Like, remember I told y'all, the guy was trying to marry his dog, then the guy tried to sue the woman because she wouldn't give him her license to marry his computer. Stuff, see, it, when you wonder, you, you think that's the end, but then there's probably something else. Why? Because they believe that you keep going in sin. This is what the Bible calls the mystery of iniquity. You never get tired. It just keeps going. You just keep, you can always come up with something else. As wicked as their mind is to think, they'll just keep on going. It says, uh, uh, he had orgies and incest, rape, sexual intercourse with children, including sodomy on young boys. They, he proclaimed it was no longer sinful. Now you see where this homosexual thing is coming from. The people who run your media, the people who run, who's over your, who these, your, these rappers are running to get record deals from, they have to rap this spirit. Now do y'all see why the videos are the way they are? They have to rap this spirit. Even who you think, people who are so black conscious, like y'all know the movie Hidden Colors, you know, by Tariq Nasheed, but everybody that put it together was Jews. See? So, even, so notice that that hidden color said not one thing about the Jews. When they was the ones that provided the slave ships and was the slave, slave holders. But the Jews are real slick because they, they blame the white Europeans and keep you angry at them because that's they the ones put out the slave movie. That's why you always mad at white people and you never realize they the enemy of those white people and us. But they in the middle playing both of us. That's why they keep on every year make us mad. Even behind this latest cop thing, who y'all thinks behind that? Well, 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 well. The Jews on CNN, they own Fox. Same people on the same. So they getting you upset on this side. Uh, Fox is for white people. They say CNN is supposed to be bust, which they really not. But they giving you. But what they doing is they playing us off each other. They in the middle hoping nobody say nothing about them. I told y'all the real the real enemy is not white Europeans they think they superior but that's only because the Jews made them believe that but you got to realize that that see white Europeans never make slave movies the ones that make slave movies are Jews because but the Jews never put themselves in a slave movie they put a white man and you mad at the white man the Jews never gonna put themselves in there because they want you. They've been capitalizing by keeping you focused on them while they are the ones that's robbed. They don't. Now, if you look at the NBA, who owns the NBA? Who owns your black entertainers? Who owns your uh, your superstars? Who capitalizes on? Who owns the jewelry these Negroes is buying? Who sells them these fake diamonds? You got to realize that they while it's, it's profitable to keep you focused on them. Why they rob you on the on the other on the on the backhand side? That's why it's, it's hard. They don't want you to get up because they now, now you got to realize they know who you are. They know that they are you. Amen. 
They know they are you. But to keep us from waking up, they keep us focused on the white man. It's the, it's the white man. Now the white man is so gullible that he actually falls for the idea that he's superior. The Jews need him to think that way in order to keep him from seeing them. Because all he does, if you notice, he stirs up something about the black people and the white people will come out with racism and not even folk. And now, now David Duke, the head of the uh, white knights of the Ku Klux Klan, y'all know David Duke. David Duke pointed at the Jews. That's why the Jews hate them. They don't hate the Ku Klux Klan because they racist against us. They hate them because David Duke said it's the Jews that's really the ones against us and y'all. So as I said, you got to understand the warfare. It's a psychological warfare that's made. We've been fighting the wrong people the whole time. Why do you think, why do you think the Jews are the ones that founded the NAACP? All of our black organizations is founded by them. Why do you think they do that? Because they put leadership over you, the ones they want, and you never say nothing about them. You don't, your name don't go on. Why do you think if you say something about a Jew, the world go crazy? They go off. They go crazy. Why? Because they are hiding themselves. And they keep throwing white supremacy to you, and you focused on them, and you focus on white police, and you ain't figured out who puts the story out. How do we even know? Well, um, you know Reuters. Reuters is a news service that all the other and and, and Associated Press. These are the where the whole world gets their news stories from. They get it from the Associated Press. Well. The Rothschilds own it. So that means everyone, if, if there's a video on YouTube that shows almost a hundred different news people opening with the same line, saying the same thing on the same story, showing you that they all getting the media from the same source. So you're not gonna hear nothing new. They control the media. You got what I'm saying? So the goal is to never let you, never put themselves in a position in front of the camera and that's why if you look at the movies, don't walk out, look at the credits, and you will see Weinstein, and you will see, uh, uh, you will see uh, 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 Loeb, and you will see these Jewish names, and, 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 and Zimmermans, and, and you'll realize they run all of the Hollywood, you can't do, now they know in Hollywood, you cannot get no record deal contract without bowing down to the Jewish power. As a matter of fact, they call it the Jewish Mafia. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, 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 why is that important? Because in order for them to implement the, the, the plan which they wrote out in the Elder Scrolls of Zion, they have to be over the media to control how you receive information. That's why the Bible says Satan is the prince and power of the airwaves or of communication. So they over all your communication. They own your publishing houses. They got over your DNA testing centers. So even when you try to get your DNA now, it's hard to trust it. That's why black people getting three, two and three different answers because they over it now. Amen. They done got over that. So anything, any area of communication, they're over it. Why? Because the goal is to keep you blind. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, now, if, if, if white people uh, would stop for a minute and think Instead of going with the, but see, you got to realize the Jews are, that run your media are very crafty at playing on the fear of white people. All they got to do, look at what they did with this, with this Dallas thing. Look, look at what they did. They got white people ready to come and come shoot us just because so, they, they get them scared. Because the Jews was the one that first made the movies, and in the movie they portrayed us as these overly sexual, crazy niggas that just want to have sex with white women. That's what they put out. If you go look at The Birth of a Nation, that was the first one of the first movies put out. And it portrayed us as just apes and animals trying to go have sex and rape their white women. So they put the fear in the hearts of white men and then through that they control white men through fear. Is this too much for y'all to understand? So what happens is, now, by making white men feel they have to, something to lose through you, they cause them to think that they need to be superior and they operate in what we call racism. Now, they, now, that's what they do to them. Fear, make them think they got something to lose. Now what they do to us is they put out images of Mississippi burning and they, uh, of, of uh, what's the 12 years a slave 
and you know these movies that that show us being stomped under the heel of the white man and raped and lynched and beat and and then, and then we get angry at them now what they leave out of the movie and what they leave out from the white man is the jew he's the one that bankrolled slavery he's the one that was used on his ship it was, it was you on his ship. The Jews are the ones that owned the first slavery plantations. If you look up the slave logs, you'll find out that they shut down slave selling on the holiday, the Jews' holidays, because Jews owned the, owned the slave uh, auction houses. So that's why when Farrakhan and them wrote the book uh, 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 Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, the Jews got mad because it starts showing that they were the ones that really have been over black people, not the white people they keep on putting in the media. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Now, now you gotta admit that's a great strategy. I'm hiding right in your face. Got, got, I, got, I got the white people mad at y'all, got y'all mad at the white people, and I'm sitting right in the middle, raping y'all by all the money, because that's what they've known in history, they're merchants, they're money, money changers. Are y'all there? So I wanted y'all to understand that. So, you know, cause I, you know how you know how uh, they're saying now, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter is so silly. Don't they know this is just a, a tool of the white uh, of the uh, Illuminati to to declare martial law? I'm like, but y'all y'all doing the same thing too, because y'all won't admit that police are killing black folk based upon skin color. If y'all admit that, y'all take away their power. Now we can't give up because we dying. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now, so uh, this is the reason why I believe that Christ in the book of Revelations made sure he spoke twice about these fake Jews because they would be the key to understanding the last day. Are y'all there? Now part of the reason, now note, and, and notice this, everything we have ever said as a people they have refuted and fought, fought us for it. Everything. Fought hard. Anytime we wanted to change, if we want to change our name to Afro, they fight that. Whatever we want to do, they, they fight it, right? The one thing they had not said nothing about is us being Hebrews. They're not fighting that at all. They're scared to even touch it because they don't want to shed light on it. Because they know once they say something about it, the truth got to come out. Notice, notice. Notice these brothers is on the street corner saying some of the most worst stuff about them. I mean, y'all, if you y'all seen it, but and, and yet there is nobody refuting them. Because they know if they say something against them, it's gonna open up a dialogue and they're gonna say, well, who is the real people? Well, where did y'all come from? And then they're gonna and then see what you don't realize is they are walking in your blessing. They stole your life. They stole your life. They stole your life. That's, that's why, and they know it, that's why they are over you. They stay over us. The Jews are over you. Anytime we get something, they come in and buy it from us. Anytime, anytime we try to, if we, get out, if we get too much money, they'll come in and tax you. They, they did that to keep us from rising because our rise is their demise. They know if we ever find out who we are, it automatically points the world to them as being a fraud. So they have done everything in their power to control us. That's why they get mad when I entertain and speak out because they feel like, just like, y'all remember when Donald Sterling was, got caught talking to the girl behind the scene and he was saying, well, I give them money, I do this, but I don't want them in my, I don't want them around me. And he was talking about how he felt about black people, but he felt like I'm doing this for them. They not on up, don't be bringing those dirty black people. Why was he saying that? Because that's how they feel about us. He understood that our goal is to stay over them. That's why if you understand the black man or the black woman is the most regulated in all the world. Now every other sport that we don't dominate, they let them do what they want to do. You can go to pro right at 12 years old. But for some reason, any sport we dominate, now they got to the, stay in high school, you got to stay in college, you can't go to the NBA when you want to. Why? Why do they regulate us? Because they, everything we get over, and that's why they tell our athletes that you better not say nothing about your people, help your people, and that's why them brothers are solid. Now they don't actually tell them that what they do is, if they speak out, they lose endorsements. So they keep their mouth shut to keep endorsements. That's why Carlo, Carmelo Anthony finally came out and said, look, man, we got to stop worrying about so many endorsements because our, our people need to hear us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't think those brothers are not going to get no backlash. Just like Jesse Williams, they find him now. 
they going they, they gonna to get you out of there because they don't, the, the worst thing is for people to wake up. That's the worst fear. Now, can I keep going? Because I want to show y'all why nothing will ever come out of Hollywood. Uh, of, 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 that's why anytime I see a Christian talking about God sent me to Hollywood, God, I'm going to record and say, man, God ain't doing that. That's wicked. God is not sending you to no industry. That industry is dominated and controlled by Satan himself. God will never send you to that industry. All you Christians, I told y'all, God didn't do that. That's your just fleshly desire. And you, ain't, you can't rap that good anyway. Go get a job, take care of your family. Look, now, now, let me keep reading. Look, so, okay, one year later, Jacob Frank proclaimed himself to be the re reincarnation of Sabbatai Zevi and the living Messiah for all Jews. Not even Sabbatai Zevi was as evil as Jacob Frank. Now, Jacob Frank rejected, okay, I read that. The Unholy Trinity. In 1773, Jacob Frank traveled to Frankfurt, Germany, the birthplace of the Illuminati. And let's tie this in. That's where he formed an unholy alliance with Adam Weishaupt and Mayor Amschel Rothschild's banking dynasty. Now, y'all know Adam Weishaupt was one of the founders of the Freemasons. And y'all know who Rothschild was. He was the first banking dynasty. So they have an unholy trinity. The unholy trinity was Jacob Frank, Adam Weishaupt and Amr Rothschild. Now these are the people that formed this philosophy of the new world order that we're seeing unfold. Y'all got that? Is this too much? Y'all want me quit? Y'all want me to stop? I can go and get something to eat. I don't even have to keep on talking about this. I, I know, I know already. I already know the truth. Y'all got to respond like y'all want this. This is labor. I'm working. Now, now, so Rothschild, let's talk about who he is real quick. Rothschild, the ambition of the Rothschild dynasty was to win, listen to this, was to win control of the world's gold, central banks, and wealth. Now, these the families, their goal, and think, think about what gold is his. I want all the money. Now, I don't want some of the money. I want... They said these people got, there's nobody know how much money they got. These people are up in the trillions of dollars. They said these people got gold vaults where they, you know they took all the gold from Fort Knox. They've been took that. These people got, they said these people got wealth, like, like, it's like, why do you need it? But remember the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. They love it. They love money. So the Rothschilds love money, and their ambition was to not just take some of the wealth, but they wanted it all. The Rothschilds sent John Jacob Astor, Jacob Schiff, and Paul Warburg, sent them to America where they influenced the privatization of the Federal Reserve Banking System and the dismantling of the American Constitution. The, the, the Rothschilds sent them three bankers here, and they the ones put the Federal Reserve in, and that's why right now we're in the debt we're in. The Federal Reserve was a way to, ex ex to, ex to extract your real resources and give you paper. You got paper, they get oil. You got paper, they get gold. You got paper, and now, now there's nothing left to extract. See, they extracted everything they can extract of America. Now they're literally selling off the land, and then the people are next. You are the collateral for the $65 trillion that cannot be paid back. We'll all, now why, now why do you realize why they're gonna legally cause you to be a slave? The whole world will be under this one world ruler. Everything will belong to him and you will, they legally did it through corporate law. You are a corporate, uh, uh, you are corporate property and your social security number tells you that you are a corporate property. Therefore you are owned by somebody. If you don't believe me, try to leave America. Try to leave. Watch how hard it is to leave. You can get a passport, but you, got, you try to leave her and try not to come back and watch how hard it is to do that because they want you to stay in here to get that debt. It really ain't going to really matter too much where you go because the whole world's going to be under the same one world system. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So, the Rothschilds so that's the Rothschild. The Weishaupt, Adam Weishaupt, 
remember I said the unholy trinity? These three make up your new world order. The philosophy, say the philosophy of the new world order. Adam Weishaupt, the goal of Weishaupt and the Jesuits was to take control of the Vatican and its hierarchy of the Catholic clergy. Weishaupt formed the order of the Illuminati and infiltrated the Freemasonic lodges with his own doctrine until every Masonic lodge in every nation accepted it. In other words, he infiltrated all the secret societies and put Jewish philosophy in all secret societies. So they all had to bow down to the Jewish philosophy of, of Sabbatai Zevi. The third part of this unholy trinity was Jacob Frank. The Frankist goal was the destruction and replacement of Jewish ethics with satanic religion based on the exact opposite of Jewish teachings, which is what we see in Hollywood with all of them wearing the red thing, the, the uh, Kabbalah and stuff like that, and, uh, and then up, up, just really uplifting all of the New Age teachings, all the stuff you see in that's not Christian, that's what these people are pushing at. Jacob Frank's, uh, let's see, when this unholy alliance of consequence of of conscienceless men was seated, a cancerous war against humanity erupted. Now, what does, y'all y'all still there? What does their philosophy look like? Okay, what does their philosophy look like? Because it's all, we've already seen it. The philosophy, the end time philosophy on the Antichrist will be communism. This is the philosophy of these Jewish elite families because communism first of all takes all power from the citizens communism says citizens cannot own property everything you get comes from the state you have a dictator over you communism believes there is no God so if you go and look at uh, uh, pre-world war one Russia you'll find what communism looked like under Stalin and Lenin. When they, not, when they wiped out God for 70 years, those people did not know God, and, and then they went on a killing spree to kill like 60 million of them. So the philosophy of communism is the philosophy that they are spreading. Y'all got what I'm saying? So this is why you're seeing America becoming socialist. Socialism is everybody's dependent on the government. Everybody runs to the government. The government is doling out everything, and you standing in line, because that's exactly where you want a slave to be. Now, the goal of these, of these elite is to kill off maybe six billion of you and have a working slave class to serve them. Kill off the majority of you and have the whole world as a playground and have nothing but slaves uh, to serve them, the rest of the people that they allow to live. See, that was what the Hunger Games was showing you. That was why the elite loved the movie The Hunger Games, because that's exactly what they want to do. When this unholy alliance of consciousness men was seated, a cancerous war against humanity erupted. With Rothschild financing, Jacob Frank became fabulously wealthy and put, was put in charge of spreading a Luciferian theology that would be the hidden hand behind future wars and revolutions. Jacob Frank's followers were called Sabbatean Frankists. They practice witchcraft and occult rituals, including animal and human sacrifices. Lucifer, they declared, was the true God. The Sabbatean Frankists expanded their movement by masquerading as converts to other religions. Remember that. That's why a lot of your, who you think these Christian pastors would not say nothing, and they're so weak, and they're just in love with Israel. A lot of them pastors are covert. they call crypto-Jews. Crypto Jews are those that pretend to be Islamic or pretend to be Christian, pretend they not of their own heritage, but, that, but they go into your movement hiding as they with you, but then they turn your movement out. That's the whole goal, turn your religion out. It's too much. Uh, the Frankists traded their wives and daughters with members, with members and, and powerful non-members who they needed to seduce into their cult. That's why Hollywood's always about throwing little white girls at you. They throw white girls at you. They throw white girls at, at, at these black guys. They use their own daughters to, one, if, if you notice, a lot of the black entertainers, uh, they die and they got a white wife. 
Well, a lot of those white wives are Jewish girls. So why they do that, they do that on purpose. Like, let's say, uh, uh, who was it? Um, one of them that, uh, uh, he was a real, uh, Sam, Sam Cook. Sam Cook. See, what they do is, uh, when a, that's why you see all those people, those Motown stars and all of those, you know, they always die broke. They always die with nothing. Because what they do is they actually put, like, let's say the manager will introduce him to his daughter. You got a black man that can sing and he don't know nothing, we don't know business. The manager's a lawyer, he introduces his daughter to you, she pretends to fall in love, you marry her, and then you die or she poisons you, and then when, and, or, or it's a mechanism of control. Because if you do something they don't want you to do, somehow you end up dead and then all your fortunes go back to them. See, your wealth don't pass. See, our wealth does not pass to the next generation. That's the reason why we never can build nothing as a people. Because our wealth, they make sure your wealth don't go to the next generation. Why do you think they killed Michael Jackson? Michael owned Sony. He owned it. I didn't even know till Dick Gregory got a list of everybody Michael owned. Michael owned half the music industry, half the stars, artists. He owned their royalties and publishing. Michael did. The list was so long, Dick Gregory just read it and read it and read it. And that's why they killed Mike. Because then once they kill Mike, what they think they did, they stole billions of dollars of, of, away from him. That's why they do stuff like that. The reason why they do stuff like that is because the goal is to never let your money pass to the next generation. We, that's why we don't have generational wealth. In order to get out of this, what we in, we need a generational wealth. My wealth need to pass to my children. And then they can stand on my shoulders and then they can go 20 years already on top and not have to build nothing to get where I am already at. So what they do, they make sure that they, that, why do you think they, uh, boxers, boxing is another thing. You notice how boxers, they make millions of dollars throughout their career, they all die, brain damaged and messed up, and then the manager ran off with the money. Why? The Jews are run boxing. Why, why do they take, why do they do that? They never let them, they never let their money pass to the next generation. Hip hop, that's another one. Think about all the hip hop artists you've seen come up with. Where are they? They old men broke, why? They sold millions of records, where, they, where, where the money go? It went to the, the Def Jam, went to the Jewish uh, owners. The goal is to use you, not pay you, let you live good while I'm using you, but I ain't letting you take this money and fund no, your own people with this money. Because you could, what could you do with a, a $500 million? Man, you could, you could turn the ghettos of America out. If I, so we're going to make sure you don't have no money when you die. So if they can't get a brother with just taking his money through some type of bad business deal, they'll just tax them. Notice how a lot of our entertainers end up paying on taxes. They come for you at the end of your life, you owe millions of dollars in taxes. And that takes the fortune you do got. That's, how they, that's, that's, that's the reason why they wrote the tax law. It's too much. Y'all need to learn this. And then, see, the problem that I'm having is, is you know, I, I, told, I, told, I, told, I tell this one right, but I said, no, I love white people. I said, but y'all got to learn this. Stop thinking that y'all was good. Y'all know. Y'all got to learn the hard truth. This is hard truth. I don't like it, but we got to learn it. I'm almost done. Luciferian Jews. By 1776, Orthodox Jewish rabbis and leaders rejected Jacob Frank and the pagan invasion of evil that took hold in the 18th century Europe. They declared Jacob Frank and his Luciferian followers to be heretics and denounced Kabbalism to notice how the Kabbalism came back in Hollywood and, as, and rejected as Jewish faith. When Jacob Frank died in 1791, the daughter, Eva Frank, and his sons, Joseph Frank and Roshus Frank, led the Frankish court in Offenbach, Germany. Jacob Frank's sons, Roshish Frank, reversed his name and was known as was known in Europe as Frank Roche. Some genealogists believe the, the surname Roche in the Princess Diana's family tree originates with Jacob Frank's son, Frank Roche. Rabbi Wolf Gunther Plaut is the former president of the Canadian Jewish Congress. He claimed that Sabbatean Frankers are the false Jewish Zionists who reject traditional Judaism. The Sabbatean Frankists were behind Nazi Germany Holocaust and World War II, which was engineered to create the State of Israel. That's how they got the State of Israel. It was set up to make the Jewish people look persecuted. 
and they went to the Brit. They 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 they, they asked uh, Rothschild cut a deal with Britain to give them the land of Palestine if they can get America in the war. If so, the Jews was like, we can get America to get into the war to help y'all win the war if Britain y'all give us Palestine. So they signed the Balfour Declaration and. They got the America to get into the war through false flag, and America got into the war, and we the ones whooped the Germans for the British, and then they gave, uh, they gave Israel somebody else's land. And that's how they got the land of Palestine. But that was the goal of the Rothschilds, that's to start the war. All wars are started over what they want. It's over oil, it's over, it, 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 there no war ever started by what they said the war started for. It's always, man, I, it, it's like, y'all remember when uh, Nabob said I want uh, I'm when uh, 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 Ahab said, I want Naboth's vineyard. Well, that's how his war start. Rich dude say, man, I want that. Are oh, you gonna give it to me? I'm a fan. What did Jezebel do? She went and lied. They come to the American people and lie. Oh, he's over killing his people. He's a dictator. He's terrible. And then we'll get behind him. Well, we, we gotta stop that. Then you go kill up a bunch of people, kill innocent folk. A bunch of our men die and he get, and he get an oil reserve. This rich man gets his oil reserve, and then it don't matter. And we bury our boys, and then we sit back and call that patriotism. This is what war is for. It's never for what they say it is. Why does America big bad America? Why we gonna be whooping these little countries? Why we fighting another country every five years? We gotta fight a little country, cause that country got something we want. Like Afghanistan had heroin. We wanted that. Now we have a heroin epidemic. Before we never had a heroin epidemic, but after we took over Afghanistan, now uh, they're not even telling y'all because heroin's a white epidemic. But heroin is killing, they get ODing every day on heroin, but we didn't have it before they went in Afghanistan. They went to Afghanistan to steal that, to, to, to steal. Also, they went in Afghanistan because Afghanistan had a trillion dollar vein of lithium. What you put in batteries and your cell phones, they went in there to steal that out of Afghanistan. See, when they find stuff in countries, they declare war on it, making like they want to go and help the people, but the goal is to get the resource. But they know American people ain't going to get behind them going in there doing that, so they got to come up with, he's a dictator, he's a terrorist, he's harboring terrorists, and they'll let, we'll, we'll get behind it and we'll let them go in there. But the whole goal was to steal. Like Saddam, you know Saddam had nothing to do with 9-11, but why do we go fight Saddam? We wanted the oil fields of Saddam. We want to take over the Middle East. That's what we did. See, these rich families are sitting back saying, like Monopoly, like real Monopoly board. Think about Monopoly. This is really how it works. Who do y'all think come up with the game? It's a game of domination. They literally sit back. They probably got a board as big as this room, and it's the stuff they want. Man, I want that. You want that? You, you want that, dude? I'll get, let, let my brother have it. I want that. I see, oh, you know, the Caribbean, they just found gold in the Caribbean. Oh, I want that. Well, how are we going to get it? We just can't take it. Well, we got to figure out how to take it. I know what we'll do. We'll just say the, 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 the president down there is a drug dealer. We'll declare war on drugs in this country and go down there and remove him. And oh, who we gonna put? Oh, we gonna get this guy from the CIA that we've been grooming him to be a leader and put him over that country. And then he'll let us come in and take the minimum rights and that's all we need to do. And that, that's just how they do stuff. But this is all about what they want. They sit back and want what they want. They just, that's why Africa's cut up the way it is. Because they know all the resources. I didn't even know the Congo is the richest place in the world. The Congo got so much wealth. They said the Congo got trillions of dollars. It's, tr it's so high. They said it's so much in the Congo that if, they, if the Africans would, I would be able to touch what they got, they would bankrupt the world. They, would, they said they would bankrupt the world because there's so much mineral wealth in that soil in the Congo. And that's why they cut it all up and, they, and, and see... When they found oil in Nigeria, what did they do to keep the Africans from getting wealthy? Because you do know, they said there's more oil in Nigeria than there is in Saudi Arabia. Nigeria has the biggest oil field in the world. Why come the Africans are poor? I've been to Nigeria, right? I've seen oil in Nigeria run off on the ground. I've seen it. I've seen it. Why are they so poor they own all the oil? Why? So you gotta understand, when they found oil there, in order to control the Nigerians, they funded Boko Haram. That little terrorist group, Boko Haram, they using Boko Haram to keep the Africans and anybody from investing in Africa. 
So while they got Boko Haram terrorizing and letting them, funding them to terrorize, China's coming in, buying the raw oil from the ground. They got to ship the oil to China. China refines it and then sells them the gas back. Y'all ain't heard that. Y'all ain't heard what I said. Y'all ain't heard that. I got the oil coming out of my ground, but they blew up their refineries. So they can't even refine the oil coming out of their own soil. And they, and they pay Boko Haram and give them guns to keep, that's why, that's why you always notice, why is it always fighting in Africa? They, 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 the white people go in there and keep them fighting. Because if you fighting, we still in. Why you fighting? Y'all fight each other. We still in your blood diamonds. Go and fight each other. Fight each other. We still in your goal. That's the goal. Because somebody decides they want something and they, instead of them, of course, they ain't going to be diplomatic. Why are we going to pay you and we can take it? So you go, so I remember in Uganda, uh, one of my spiritual fathers in Uganda, he told me, he said, man, he said, he said, you go to Tanzania, he said, man, you go look up on some, look up on some of house, you find a big nugget of gold, a diamond. He said, it, it, it's like, it's like, it's like rocks. You can just go give it, oh, they go wow. give it away for a bag of rice. Wow. They give, now, why do you think they don't, they, why do you think that the document, what says NSSM 200 document, that they said they was trying to keep us from them, keep blacks over here away from them, why do you think they don't want us to connect with them? Because this guy that owns this land, it's, it's African that owns this land, can go out there and pick up some gold and say, oh, I ain't got to sell it to y'all, Arabs, middlemen. I can sell it to my people in, in America and get a real price for it. They can get rich, I can get rich. Well, no, we're not going to let that happen. So that's why they keep us away from each other. See, think the thing, this this, this thing. And I saw it. God, he, these, it, they was finding gold so easy, they was digging up the floor of their own house and finding gold. But then they would go down there because Arabs is over and they'll trade it for a bag of rice. Small bag of rice, that's it. Diamonds for a bag of rice. That movie Blood Diamond is real. That's what they do. Literally get a diamond and go trade it for a bag of rice. Because they can't connect with you. See, now what? Now, now if he could get that diamond to me, I wouldn't give him a bag of rice. I might give him three, four hundred dollars, which is a whole lot of money for him. Then I bring it here, get it polished, shine, and cut, and I might sell it for $10,000. But in his country, four, $500 is great, and her 10 grand great for me. Now I can send him more money. Now he sends me more. Now we got, now we done cut out the bird. We done cut out K's. See, you cut out, you think they're gonna let, that's why they keep us down. Yeah. That's why they don't want you to go to Africa. You, if, you, if, you, if you go to the airport and you go to Africa, look how they all look at you as you're going to, on the, the everybody, TSA everybody, where you, where you going at, where you going? I mean, me and my wife going, where, where, you, where y'all going? Why y'all going there? Why? And I think I got a little silly, like, no, you been in why I'm going there. I'm going there, I'm going there. But they was like shocked, like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing going there? So if you do go there, I, I would suggest that every black person go by while you can. And if you go, go to Ghana. Go to Ghana. Ghana is actually telling African Americans, because Ghana's built up nice. They actually telling African Americans, I just seen it. When I was, I was there before and they were selling us then. Matter of fact, I got a picture with a Ghana king. And the Ghana king and his wife told me, she's actually the king, the woman is the king actually. But uh, she, but they told me that uh, they said they said if you come here we'll give you land here we'll give you some land. So it, they said tell all your America and then they just put out something for America African Americans. They said y'all ain't gotta go through that America. Y'all come home, come here. They think it's our home, you know. But 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 part of us really did come. I told y'all we did. Some of us did come from that. That whole West is Negro land. That whole West over is Negro land. So. So, and in St. Ghana is real built up, you know, the city is a nice city there. And so, like Accra, Accra, Ghana, which is the capital of Ghana. And so what I'm saying is, they don't want you to know about that. They don't want you to know that you can connect with different, you don't have to, you know, just be in America. And that's why they discourage us from going. And that's why you wanna, you know, if, if, if you save up any money at all, that should be a place you should visit. Don't go there on no honeymoon, that ain't no honeymoon place. You go on there, it, it, you on the mission if you go there, but the goal 
is to is to is to the goal is to is to get into the into get into Africa and just see nothing but black people. You you will be shocked how you'll be. You never. It is one of the most. It, 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 it's, 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 it's one of the most I couldn't explain it it's just you've never seen it it's just everything's black everybody's black every, every official everybody's black and, and really they don't look at you as it, this color's not a bar it ain't like it is her it's not a barrier her you know they don't look at it like that they look now they know you're American when you start talking because they'd be shocked because they think you're African until you start talking the point is I really think everybody should go. I think everybody, with once in your life, if you only have one trip to make, go to Africa and visit. Go to Africa and visit. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good flight, and uh, it's worth going. I'm not going to go no further with this teaching. But because uh, I wanted to tell y'all that. Uh, going to Africa, me and my wife first went to Uganda, it changed us. It changed us when we really saw I saw what they were doing. I saw why they kept us away from Africa. I saw why, because see, I, I was expecting jungle. You know how you think about the jungle. It's always, I'm thinking tribes and bones in the nose, and I didn't realize these people got cities, especially when we went to South Africa. It was, South Africa was very modern, like Chicago. It's very modern. And, you know, and so what I'm saying is, uh, if you can travel, it'd be good for your child to go. See something other, because I'm telling, now the reason why I'm telling y'all to go to Africa because you might be going. <laughs> you might be going to Africa because I'm going to tell y'all what's going to happen. Now, I haven't told y'all this before, but I'm going to tell y'all what's going to happen. They're going to put you out of here. They're going to put you out. This is what happens. This is what I told y'all Exodus is about. They're going to put you out. At one time, they, gonna, they didn't want you to leave when Marcus Garvey was trying to leave. But they're going to put you out eventually because that's the only thing that's going to keep, they think, going to stop them from being destroyed. And they think that they're going to have to do right by you. <laughs> it's like, if you don't do right by me, you know. <laughs> but it's true. America's under a curse because of us. If you notice everything they do to us, it happens to them. They put crack on us, heroin on them. Everything they do to us come back to them. They want to decrease, they were trying to decrease our numbers. They don't have babies. See, everything they do, and I know they see it because everything, if you just look back and look at when stuff happened to us, it, I, 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 I show you, I show you. The Dallas thing. Remember they shot the police and they bought oh, the, this black boy, you know, they put his face everywhere, you know, that was it. And they put it in our face, you know, it was like, he did it, he shot the police, black people, black lives matter, remember? The next day after that, a white guy shot two police. And they were. Y'all know that was a guy down in Baton Rouge. Black guy just shot two, some police, right? But one of them was a black police. They ain't say nothing. What that did, it showed their hypocrisy. Also, y'all only going to report it when it's white police, but y'all said we only march when white police shoot us. So y'all only gonna report it when it's a black man do something to a white person. So see, God always seems to balance it out. The hypocrisy is always shown when they do something, it comes back on them. Stand on your feet. Remember I told y'all before I started preaching this, the goal was for you to look up Sabotage Zebby yourself. This is, this is a real long teaching. Look him up yourself and you'll find out why everything is going wicked. These, this is these people's philosophy.